Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is a great app that takes top non-fiction books, pulls out the key elements and breaks them down into 15 minute segments called Blinks. In doing this you get to absorb the key parts of the book whilst getting through more books of any given subject. Being on the road, Blinkist is great because it gives you access to thousands of books for one set price whilst not having to carry all those books around. I either sit on the sofa, chill out and listen intently or stick the headphones in, take Lance for a walk and listen to one on the move. All like the one I've been listening to most recently, A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough, I've been underneath the van fixing it. It's been keeping me chilled whilst bolts have been stressing me out. And on top of that, because you can break books down and listen to them a lot quicker, I've also been listening to a creative thinking handbook by Chris Griffiths and Melina Costi. Other popular books include A Barefoot Investor by Scott Pape, Everything Is by Mark Hansen, Becoming by Michelle Obama, and The Courage to be Disliked by Chiro Kashimi. There's a link in the description below for your 7 day free trial and then 25% off your premium membership. Right then, that's enough from today's sponsor, let's get back to the trailer. Oh, good morning. What a slight design change on these. Um, they just look a little bit shit. Problem with them was, is one, they were a bit wider than I thought, so it doesn't quite sit on this beam properly. Two, we've got the winders for the legs, <clears throat> meaning they both had to come in a little bit. And it just, when you look at it rear on, it just looks a little bit like Dexter from Dexter's Lab. And I mean, they're not exactly quality. The back of them is already broken where I've bolted them, just from the mere act of bolting them. The the grills, they're not going to take that much of a hit. I've just dented it just by hitting it with my hand. And um, the plastic, it's not even waterproof. There's already a bit, like, when it rains, you get condensation in them, and they're all just a bit shit. I got them because they sort of match the van's top lights, but at the same time, they don't. So, yeah, they just don't look right. So, they're changing. And they're changing to these. I am so chuffed with these. So they've got the side light and the brake light around like the halo thing. And in the middle you got your indicator, but the indicator does the Audi thing, which I don't care, it's cool as shit. I might even get another set of these and change them all on the van. Unfortunately it doesn't have the uh, reverse light in them. Now I don't think you need reverse lights on a trailer, but I've bought little LED replacements anyway that should sit next to these and look relatively okay where are they yeah there so i should whether i've got to figure out which way it's going to go around but a lot nicer a lot more sleek than uh, than these things so today's job i'm going to be ripping them off and wiring up the new ones i don't think i recorded the um covers i did for the old step rollers they're not the best job to be honest i hand bent them but um yeah they just sort of sit over there now I was going to leave them, I was like, yeah, ventilation gap, why not? But uh, honestly, where this thing's going to be parked, it's just asking for mice and God knows what to just jump straight in there. And they got a platform to do it on with the back of this, so covered them both up. There and there. Still got a little bit to do around that bit. And then while I had the PU out, I've also gone along and there was like the tiniest little gap between box and trailer. So I've just PU'd in between that. And, uh, and got rid of it and it just looks so much more meant and better now. So the last thing to do to finish this whole ensemble off is to get the um, the new lights on. Oh, thank you. Is this mine now? This is Lance's new favourite toy. Most soft toys get destroyed within the day. But because Lance picked this out himself at the pet shop, he's become very attached to it. Yo. Go on then, get it. <sighs> the moment these things arrived, I weren't massively happy with them, but <sighs> until something else come up, they were just going on. It's just, oh dear. Oh, hello, you're a big spider. Oh, ow. A lot of people ask why I always wear a hat, that is because I have no hair, and when you have no hair, for some reason, you have no spatial awareness of your swede, so I always hit it off shit. So put the hat on, A, for like a buffer, and B, just to give me that hair like, you know, 
awareness of where my head is. There we go. Oh, yeah, all right. Um, can we do this one at a time? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and yes. See ya. And now to repeat from the other side. Done. Did they all just come out? <laughs> Get out. Do, do, do. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, oh, dear. The cheap little crimp connectors. Lovely. <laughs> you beaut. Oh, doesn't that look dapper? Oh, these are so much easier to fit. They're just a lot more solid. phone's dying already. However, now, I should probably brush that up, but yeah, it'll be fine. Eventually, I will solder all these together but until I know exactly what's doing what. And I'm fully happy with everything. They're just going to be crimped. With the lights now on, I could pull the van to the front, plug everything in and check that the lights are all working. It was a good job I'd only crimped them together because I got it wrong. Moving them around and plugging them in the right way sorted that out and I could then go for the permanent connection. Now a long time ago I learned um, when you're doing stuff with molten hot items above you um, it's pretty wise just to sort of give the drop area a wide berth because uh, a couple of years ago I was doing something above my head with a hot glue gun. It dribbled went down my arm and the instant reaction is to go ah and it just took my skin with it so um, yeah that was a bad day simple but you know easy to forget and you may have noticed on the old lights and these ones that when you've got more than one function going so like the side lights and the indicators um, there's a bit of a drop and that's because of an earthing problem which hopefully I'm going to solve now by linking this, which goes from the earth, uh, straight to this bolt here on the reg plate, so that the electrics are earthed off the chassis. And then I'm going to do another one um, just off the back lights, and just try and add more of a, a point of earth for the uh, lighting system on this. I've also got to change the high level lights to LEDs so they pull less of a draw, because at the minute they're, they're your standard bulbs. Um, and yeah, just try and pull the load down a little bit because the wires are only small for trailer wires and um, all that earth having to go through the one earth wire isn't, isn't enough. So yeah, I'll try and fix that by doing this. Also, if you can spot uh, some longer patches of hair on my head, yes, I shaved last night and yes, I missed a patch. Emma notified me of this and I'm sure some of you will too. Got a bit of a going on. Hopefully the camera won't pick it up. I'll get away with it, but I've just told you. Anyway. What's she gonna do with a chimney on her what? Now I know they're sort of flashing to you guys because uh, modern LEDs for some reason just do that on cameras but they look dapper and we got the high levels on as well 
and the dipping light has gone. Yeah, sorted. I don't know, I have these, but you know, then the law. Whilst on the topic of lights, I added some more. These lights had come out of the van on the original cowling where the slap head now sits. They'd just been rolling around in a cupboard doing not a lot, so now they'll be like security lights when the trailer gets to the land. But before I could finish fitting it, something awful happened. Oh God, what was that? Oh, I know what that was already. Oh no. Four and a half hours later, that's now tidy and I can carry on. Finally found the new uh, hitch coupling for the trailer. Uh, it's not that far away. It's about an hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half. I was I've been looking for ages, but they're all coming up at like two, three hundred quid, and that's three times more than the box and over half what I pay for the entire trailer. So yeah, I've got to try and keep these costs down. But I've just found a guy on eBay who's got a um, Basically like an Alco one, all got the brakes on it, got the uh, jockey wheel holder. He only wants 50 quid for it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll come and have a look. And if it's all in good working order, I'll take it away today and pay cash. So he's happy with that. So yeah, I'm just going to drop over there and um, hopefully we'll have a new hitch. Things didn't quite go to plan and I ended up with two hitches. Unfortunately, when I got here, the original one, the shock in that's gone as well. So he's just said for an extra tenner, I can have that one and sort of make one out of the two because that one's missing its uh, thing as well. So fair play to him. It was a genuine mistake. But yeah, got two to play with now. To break up the drive and because we're in a gorgeous part of the country, I took Lance for a nice long woodland walk. It was nice to get back out into nature and escape for a bit and oh wow that is a long string of snot oh wow ruined the moment anyway once back i set about making the two hitches into one decent one and in doing so i got to use the workshop trailer in its purpose for the first time With a lot of head scratching and faff, I finally have something put together and ready to go on. Mm. And of course, all the old hitches bolts were imperial. The big bar that connected the hitch to the brakes was stuck, so... Oh, so 
basically being covered in grease. Ironically, now that I'm swapping the hitch, the off-road tyres jockey wheel will fit perfectly. So I reattached that that was just lying around and ended up giving this one to one of the druid type dudes in a caravan down at Stonehenge. Now he'd taken a lot of something and didn't make much sense, but he seemed pretty happy with it. But the same couldn't be done for the old hitch. It's yeah, about done that is. Not only was the dampener completely shot, but the coupling itself wasn't 100% and the handbrake cog was so worn it didn't really apply properly. So with that trifecta of problems, this is just going in the scrap. The A-frame had to be cut back a little bit to allow for the new hitch, but that was all right, because it's just that little bit too long anyway. about that for the day um i've been on this longer than i'm willing to admit it's been like four hours mostly because of this little area here oh my god that took me a while to figure out uh yeah i got it now that steam needs to go back a bit more but that is now engaging the brake a bit that's not been tightened up yet it's not been bolted on yet but it's like eight o'clock now i'm hungry and i'm tired Little man wants a walk. Oh yes, we've gone back to the old off-roady bastard tyre. Also got to get in there and somehow push the um, the ram back because it needs to sit in that hole. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of hefty. But uh, we're getting there. Yeah, I'm right. The rest of this is tomorrow. of the two hitches housed the jockey wheel clamp. I wanted the jockey wheel clamp, but it was welded on. Behind the welds though you could see bolt holes, so in theory cutting through the welds I could then bolt it onto the other one. Yeah. Alright, so got to relocate the wheel, spare wheel. In theory I could go back to these holes, but I haven't got any angle it'll span that but yeah I think I'm gonna keep this in place take that off and I'm either gonna mount that there I'm not sure how far away that is or 
There's some mounting holes here, and I could just mount it there, which I think would probably be better. Close to the front is, I think, better. Yeah, basically I've just spent the past hour trying to align the damper, push it back and then get the bolt through this, through the, the, uh, the main bar, through the damper and back out. That's been fun. You didn't really miss a lot, trust me. So now that goes on there. Cable tie around there, that could do replacing, but yeah, cable tie around there. And bolt it all up. And we're done. <laughs> Thank God for that. I'm so tired of this job. Should really take it for a bit of a test run as well. I've got, um, I walked in it earlier and it was really bouncy and I was like, why? Of course, because I've put a bouncy wheel on the front. <laughs> to be fair, I could, yeah, I could do with a bit more air. With just a quick lick of hammer right to do and some potential adjustments to be made, that was the hitch done. So I turned my attention to scooting the spare wheel back a little bit. Well, that went smoother than expected. I next tackled the main side of the electrics. Not just the sockets inside, but the hookup and charger system too. See in its untidy basic form. See if it works. It's a good sound. So if I haven't mentioned it already, I really lose track of what I've been recording at the minute because I'm on 11 jobs at once. Um, this is just a bog standard 70 amp hour Halfords caravan battery. Haven't gone for the full thing yet because I don't know um, what I want yet to be honest. Um, this is just to get the lights going and you know test everything works, have some form of power while I'm working in here. Um, when it gets to the land, it's going to be a whole different setup. Obviously, it's all going to be locked into the solar system I'm going to build, the generator, um, but batteries so far, I've just left a big old gap back there, and I'll decide at a later date exactly what I want in here. The to do list on the trailer was getting pretty small, but before I could tick anything else off. Ooh, god damn! I'm not going to lie, being in here all nice and warm and dry and hearing that. It's cosy as shit in here. Oh. Alright doggo. I've needed this for about three weeks. Ah, oh, my fire ain't happening then, obviously. 
it hammered it down for hours, but come late afternoon we could step back outside. Hello. Are you mum? Mm. Oh, there's a god ray if I ever have seen. Oh, okay. Oh my god, there's a stampede going on. I could now see if all that hard work on the hitch had paid off. Would the new dampener slow down the snag and would the brake supply? From there on, it was just adding the final touches, really. That floor paint was my last job. Trailer's done. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the newest part of the Project Amber Fleet, the Settlement and Habitation Installation Transportation, the trendy new name I've christened the trailer, also known as The Shit. Hanging off the back of the van like a 4.2 metre clagnut, the shit will hold the essentials we need to set up on our off-grid base in Portugal.